Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include EU decision to modify prices astonishing and incomprehensible. Public debt sets a new record in February about 980,000 million euros. Hungary receives 24 billion euros in EU funds between 2007 and 2013. And EU lawmakers vote for redesign to make trucks safer and greener. Plus, Europe rejects UK's financial transaction tax challenge. It's Friday, 2nd of May. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. EU decision to modify prices astonishing and incomprehensible. Moroccan Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Aziz Ananouch, said the European Union's decision to modify mechanisms of the access price for Moroccan fruits and vegetables is both astonishing and incomprehensible. Moving to modify the access price systems for Moroccan fruits and vegetables is a step backwards on the negotiations that mobilised for a long period of time Moroccan and European officials, Aziz told MAP. We were satisfied over the fairness and balance of the agreement which was signed in February 2012 between Morocco and the EU, but this measure risks to disrupt the balance because of an action that totally contradicts the agreed-upon conditions, he went on. The EU is, of course, shifting the sands, so to speak, by manipulating the agreement. This is, however, a common practice to disrupt a market and make it dependent. Similar mechanisms were deployed in the UK to disrupt the dairy industry by manipulating incentives and contracts based upon butterfat quality in milk. Well-timed changes in contract agreements cannot be followed due to production lead times. Penalties then punish the supplier, who quickly becomes financially constricted and can then be exploited because of their dependency. Now, Aziz goes on to say that the relationship of confidence and sustainable partnership is being jeopardised, arguing that the unilateral decision, which concerns two parties linked by an agreement, threatens the Moroccan fruits and vegetables sector particularly tomatoes, which depend on a very constrained export system. The sector risks simply to collapse, he warned, adding, we cannot even imagine the consequences on a Moroccan sector and operators which have invested and believed in serious outlets for fruit and vegetables. Public debt sets a new record in February, about 980,000 million. The public debt of the whole general government rose again in February with a jump of 8,130 million euros to almost 988,000 million euros, representing a new record in the unstoppable rise of the liability of the state. With respect to GDP, this figure represents 96.5% of the gross value created by the Spanish economy in a year. Statistics updated this morning, the Bank of Spain, representing an increase of gross government funding, confirms a new record in the amount of money owed to the state, communities and other public institutions. Compared to January, the stock of public debt has moderated its pace of growth since a major leap of 18,700 million in the first month of 2014 with the last payment of plant providers. Now, in February, however, the motivating factor for the rise, which which is for consecutive month and is the same as explaining that the general trend is an upward liability of the state and other authorities. So, what we are seeing is that even with the dramatic austerity measures that have been imposed across every member state, the debt burden continues to spiral. We reported yesterday that the ECB is now considering its own quantitative easing program. As during our table talk discussion yesterday, Doug Coulter demonstrated the interesting timing of this move. The questions we're left with, of course, is if, after all these measures, the EU deficit and debt burden is still increasing, then where do we go from here? Hungary receives 24 billion euros in EU funds between 2007 and 2013. 
Now, final figures are not yet available, but calculations made so far indicate that Hungary closed the 2007-13 European Union budgetary cycle with a positive balance of 24 billion euros, Fazakas, the Hungarian me member of the European Audit Office, said in a lecture in Budapest on Tuesday. Fazakas said that EU payments to Hungary, including agriculture and rural development subsidies, had totaled 32.8 billion euros dwarfing Hungary's commitments to the EU, so its net gain was significant, he added. Vazakas noted the importance of European subsidies, adding that in the given period such subsidies had covered 99.8% of the cost of public development projects in Hungary. <laughs> well, well, that's one source of EU expenditure racking up the balance on the ECB charge card. EU lawmakers vote for redesign to make trucks safer and greener. European trucks will be transformed to make driver cabs more aerodynamic, cutting emissions and improving safety, under new rules backed by EU politicians on Tuesday that could divide the industry due to the cost. Campaigners hailed the vote at the European Parliament in Strasbourg as the beginning of the end of trucks' brick-shaped cabs blamed for cyclist and pedestrian deaths because of poor driver visibility. Cabs of the future should be longer, with sloping noses similar to the shape of a high-speed train. Data from the European Transport Safety Council found nearly 4,300 people died in collisions involving lorries in the European Union in 2011. And that's the latest available statistics. Jeannot Merck, president of the European Federation of Road Traffic Victims, said EU governments, which must agree to rules before they become law, had a moral obligation to embrace this hugely beneficial decision. Weakening, delaying or blocking the decision would be unforgivable, he said. EU member states are not expected to finalise their position until around the end of the year. Europe rejects UK's financial transaction tax challenge. Well folks, here is the perfect example of what we've been talking about for a long time. Interesting timing given the table talk discussion and all the mentions of legal supremacy this week. Now, before we start, let me quote from Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 301048, which is covered in detail in our film Betrayed. Here's the quote Where a statute conflicts with community law, it is the statute that must give way. Europe's top court has rejected the UK's challenge to the introduction of an EU financial transaction tax, which ministers have said will damage British firms. The EU's Court of Justice described the UK's challenge as premature, since the details of the tax had not been finalised. The FTT will be adopted by 11 EU states, but not by Britain. Now, the UK said it was prepared to take further legal action. The government is determined to continue to ensure that the interests of countries outside of this single currency but inside the single market are properly protected, a UK Treasury spokesman said. The levy, often described as a Tobin tax or Robin Hood tax, aims to raise public funds and discourage speculative trading by taxing the transactions of shares, currencies and bonds. Of the 27 EU member states, the 11 going ahead with the FTT are Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Belgium, Austria, Portugal, Greece, Slovenia, Slovakia and Estonia. Those countries had not yet decided how the tax will work, the court said, so the UK's challenge was premature. The City of London could be hit by the tax if, for example, a British firm trades with branches of French or German banks based in the capital. And so, after all of the big cheese Dave Cameroni's rhetoric about protecting the City of London and the UK finance industry, now the cornerstone of our economy, well, Dave, you've failed. Your political masters in the Bruswellian Towers of Babel have once again racked you out as being wholly impotent. This story only adds further grist to the mill about who controls and governs Britain and highlights the message that Trevor Coleman MEP put out yesterday. The only question is who do you want to be governed by, Brussels or Westminster? Today in our video library, let me introduce you to another new section of the UnitUK.com website. Brand new today, we have added a new category to our video section, 
This new category makes a home for our new live and interactive shows, Table Talk. And yesterday's guests, Sue Doidge, Christopher Genius, Doug Coulter and Trevor Coleman, MEP, discussed the 2014 European elections, and we fielded a number of comments and questions from the audience viewing via our website and YouTube channel. Our next live show will take place on Thursday the 15th of May, where the panel and I will be looking at the question, Is the EU building an Orwellian state? With the launch of the first Sentinel Satellite 1A back in early April, the European Union has big plans with its Copernicus Earth Observation Space-Based Satellite Command and Control Systems. But what does it all mean? What are the pros and the cons? Now joining me will be nuclear physicist, inventor and technology advisor for the Jimmy Carter administration, Doug Coulter, our webmaster and researcher, Andrew Fia, our administrator, Sue Doidge, political rapper and music producer Gadman Dubs, and of course my co-host Trevor Coleman, MEP. So make a note in your diary to join us on Thursday the 15th of May, live on our website. And why not be part of this fantastic new technological medium by joining the show as a panellist? Check out our help page in the resources section of our website, or email me from the contacts page for details on how to do this. So, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.